is the Writer's Almanac for Monday, September the 13th, 2021. It was on this day, 1814, Francis Scott Key was inspired to write the words to the Star-Spangled Banner, watching the British attack on Fort McHenry in Baltimore. The British had the upper hand in the War of 1812 just three weeks before. They had set fire to much of Washington, D.C., burned the Capitol, the Treasury, the President's House, President James Madison, forced to flee for his life. Americans were afraid the British might choose to invade New York or Philadelphia or Boston. The British had recently begun using rockets, a new military weapon, incendiary rockets, and and Francis Scott Key watched them raining down on Fort McHenry at the mouth of Baltimore Harbor, and he assumed the fort would not be able to withstand the attack. But just after sunrise, he saw the American flag still flying over the fort. The commander of the fort, Major Armistead, had chosen to fly an enormous flag that day, 42 feet long, 30 feet high. And Francis Scott Key began writing his poem, which celebrated a battle that turned out to be the turning point of the war, and it also immortalized the flag itself as a sacred object in America. It's the birthday of Bill Monroe, born in Rosine, Kentucky, 1911, father of bluegrass, brilliant mandolin player, tenor, singer. In 1938, he formed his band, The Bluegrass Boys, which came to include, over the years, Don Reno, Jimmy Martin, Carter Stanley, Vassar Clements, Chubby Wise, Byron Berline, and Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs. It's the birthday of the pianist, Clara Schumann, born Clara Wick in Leipzig, Germany, 1819. She gave a concert when she was eight years old, and Robert Schumann, who was 17, fell in love with her. She made her formal debut at the age of 11, considered a great pianist for the rest of her life. She married Robert Schumann when she turned 21, had seven children by him, and continued to tour and perform and compose, played her last concert in 1891, 61 years after her career had begun. Clara Schumann, who said, My imagination can picture no fairer happiness than to continue living for art. And it's the birthday of the British novelist and playwright John Boynton Priestley, J.B. Priestley, 1894, born in Yorkshire, served in the infantry during World War I. Most of his friends were killed in combat. Didn't write about the war, wrote about the time before the war. Priestley said, I belong at heart to the pre-1914 North Country. Here's a poem for today by Joyce Sutphin entitled Breakfast. My father taught me how to eat breakfast those mornings when it was my turn to help him milk the cows. I loved rising up from the darkness and coming quietly down the stairs while the others were still sleeping. I'd take a bowl from the cupboard, a spoon from the drawer, and slip into the pantry where he was already eating spoonfuls of cornflakes covered with mashed strawberries from our own strawberry fields forever. Didn't talk much except to mention how good the strawberries tasted or the way those clouds hung over the hay barn roof. Simple. That's how we started up the day. A poem by Joyce Sutphin, Breakfast, from her collection First Words, published by Red Dragonfly Press, and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac, funded by donations from listeners like you, now available on PRX for distribution by your local radio station. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.